larger sample size, group 1 with 20, has the larger standard deviation, and the two smaller samples have smaller standard deviations. So it's the flip side. Last example with dependent variable 1, this n of 15 had the 7.67 standard deviation, so I've flipped it. Homogeneity variance has been violated by Levine's test, as I would expect. And in this case here, the ANOVA is saying uh, that there is no statistically significant difference between the means. This is just a regular ANOVA saying there's no difference between these means. But when you look at the robust test of equality of means, both of them, both the Brown Forsyth and the Welch's F tests, are both suggesting P less than 0 0.05. And I think this is an important observation because usually when you think of robust and adjusted or protected type tests, you're thinking it's always going to be less powerful than the regular test that we use. But that's not always true. In this case here, Brown Forsyth is actually saying P less than 0 0.05, as is Welch. So in this case here, Welch is even more powerful than Brown Forsyth. As I mentioned, these tests will, to some degree, agree with each other, but they're not exactly the same. And when which one will be more powerful uh, will depend on the sample size differences and the magnitude of the differences in the variances. Now that's how you do the uh, robust ANOVAs in SPSS, and I thought I'd draw your attention to this simulation study because this is how we know that these tests work and that they protect us. And what Tamarkin and Serlin did in 1986, at least it was published in 1986, is they compared the Welch test, the Brown Forsyth, Krusko Wallace, uh, another test called in, uh, inverse normal scores, to be honest I've never heard of that test, and the regular ANOVA. And what they did is they simulated data to consist of various uh, parameters, uh, including differences in sample sizes and variances. And you can see what they did uh, in Table 1 here. They, uh, let's make that a little bit bigger. Here is a K of 3 means, and they have variances, differences from 1 to 6. So kind of similar to what I just showed. I did 1 to 7. It was even more uh, serious in terms of differences in the variances. So these are the variances 1, 2, and 6 across the three groups. And they also looked at differences in sample sizes. So that would be a variation from 18 to 6. So three times difference. So 18 is three times larger than 6. And they did the same thing for the four groups, up to a difference of sample size between 6 and 18. And the standard deviations varied by 1 to a maximum of 6 across the four groups. So what did they get? These are data. What they did is they simulated data for which there should be no differences whatsoever in the means. So if a statistic finds a statistical significance, then it's making a mistake. Now, what we do is we specify alpha at 0 0.05. And so these statistics should all be showing p equal 0 0.05 for these data across all the conditions. But they're not going to, uh, because some of them protect you and some don't. And the question is, well, by how much? How accurate are they? So let's look at the results for this uh, very useful simulation study that they did. Let's see if I can make that a bit bigger. Uh, what they got, this is for uh, the, uh, this is for three groups. Uh, yes, for three groups. Let's just look at three groups. The results are very similar, whether they're three groups or four groups. So in this case here, where there are three groups, variance uh, homogeneity was actually satisfied, and sample sizes are equal. So the regular ANOVA is showing protection at 0 0.05, which is what you would expect. And you find that across all the tests. So Welch is finding protection at 0 0.05. That's what we specify. That's what we hope to see. Brown Forsyth is good. Krusko Wallace is a little bit less powerful, so it's protecting at 0 0.046 rather than 0 0.05. And this other test that I don't really know much about is even more conservative. So what is an interesting observation here is that if the regular ANOVA protects you roughly at 0 0.05 with uh, variance of homogeneity satisfied and sample sizes are equal, and the Brown Forsyth and the Welch test do as well, why do we ever bother doing the ANOVA? It seems like there's no cost to doing Brown Forsyth, even if you're not worried about homogeneity of variance assumption being violated. If they're satisfied, it works. If it's unsatisfied, 
as you can see across these other conditions, it also works. So it's not protecting exactly